Hey guys and welcome back. So I forgot that I didn't actually film a January wrap up because I did a mid month one. I think it just escaped me. So I'm going to talk about the other, well, two books and one comic book um, slash graphic novel. I don't know if someone can tell me that I read in January. I've also got my plant here today. Um, she is new and I'm trying to grow her and look after her. So she's going to sit with us whilst I talk about this book, which is Gross Anatomy. I've been trying to say this for a really long time. Um, so I won't talk about this book for too long because I spoke about it in my mid month wrap up. But I think I was about three quarters of the way through when I spoke about it then. Um, and I ended up giving this book a two out of five simply because I continue to find it really self indulgent. It gets to the end and you find out sort of why she's gone down this journey of self-discovery and I sort of get it but I wouldn't get it because I haven't been through that um, but equally I just still couldn't get through the fact that I found it really self-indulgent and that the reading experience for me was I was just reading it and a lot of times I was just rolling my eyes there is quite a lot of informative things in here but I also think it's not a book you're going to pick up for information simply because none of the studies or at least I think of the studies that she talks about in here are like concrete theories they're more like okay this professor is sort of looking into this and this person this researcher is looking into this rather than them being like um I guess published papers or anything like that not like I go around reading it those anyway so I don't think it's the kind of place you go for medical information but yeah like I said I think I said in the other video this book is funny and I think it's the wit and the humor that allows this book to sort of like exist and be okay um but I think overall for me I just it was going down that self-indulgent route so much that I was just like I can't stand this anymore so yeah I definitely like will not be picking up this book up to read again but yeah it was okay I think that's what two out of five stars is it's okay the world will move on the next book I want to speak about is this book Perfect Little World by Kevin Wilson um apologies if I keep looking like at myself and not at the lens it's just i'm filming this on my phone so i just sometimes forget where the lens is really but i read this book because i saw someone a, a booktuber talk about this last year and it was on my list and then i hauled it and i had it and i just really wanted to read something that i thought would be easy to get through and that definitely was this book it was really easy to get through it was really enjoyable so the premise of this story is actually very interesting but i also feel like the book does I guess the concept of disservice but never mind um so it's basically about this project called the infinite family and it is essentially 10 family members um is it 10 or 11 because izzy's on her own so 10 or 11 family members that are all due to like have a kid around the same time and so they're brought onto this project um all of them are partnered together they have partners apart from our main character izzy who we sort of, who the story really focuses around so we start off with sort of finding out how Izzy got pregnant and then sort of what leads her down the path of choosing to join this project. And that part of the story actually takes up a huge chunk of the story. But I actually knew that going into this book. So you don't spend a lot of time, well you do spend time with, you know, the family and getting to know them. But I would say like more than half of the book is just the sort of setting the scene for Izzy, what her parents were like what she's like at school, the job she does and all that sort of thing, those sort of things. And then it comes into the family bit. And the way it's done is it just has a chapter and it goes like year one, year two, year three, year four of the project. And it's very interesting because how can you bring 10 strangers or 11 strangers together and then you're trying to create this huge family bond. Um, essentially everyone's a parent to everyone's child the children I think up until they're five don't know who their parents are and yeah essentially a little bit like a commune but not it's that's they try and make that very obvious that it's not meant to be a commune like the adults are free to do whatever they want there's no you know um grooming or anything like that there's no perversion there's nothing sexual going on um it's a bit like if you just had 10 characters in a study or something and you who were in couples and you see what happens like do they start sleeping with the other couples do they not that's essentially what the rest of the book turns out to be um but i really enjoyed it i feel like it did the concept that it was trying to explore with disservice because they have this one man who is in charge and he's the scientist and he's meant to be part of the family but even as it's described in the book and it's described by the characters he isn't he's the one that set this up so that he can sort of 
have an extended family um, for reasons that you find out in the book but he still acts like very much of a researcher a scientist and doesn't really integrate into the family and that's how they see him as well so I found that very odd that it would say that this is what he wanted but then it didn't seem like his actions didn't seem like that's what he wanted he just sort of was really happy to stand back and sort of just um, watch them all and it is mentioned a couple of times that they all felt a bit performative when you know he was around because they were they were aware that he was watching them but essentially this book just boils down to a bunch of people who all of a sudden they're, they're having to live there for like 10 years by the way um who basically start developing interest for other people within the commune um and yeah it's all about that little bit of drama that's going on there isn't really that much feature on the kids like in terms of whether the kids are super smart or anything like that they perform like above average for kids their age but it's not like spectacular spectacular it's just more because they're given a lot of care and attention and obviously there are scientists involved they naturally just tend to have developed a little bit faster it's more just a study on the parents and i think I don't know if this was intentional, maybe it was, but it just seemed to say that the perfect family couldn't exist. You couldn't create perfect families with strangers because although you could try and do it with kids who you're molding, with adults, we come with our own set of problems, our own set of beliefs and how we want to do things. Because um, it just seemed to be the adults that were causing the most problems in here. And it just seemed to be the adults that the scientists kept having to speak to and sort of um, get them to learn new behaviours or focus their attention on different things whereas the kids were completely fine so yeah I'm not sure if that was intentional or whatever um, this project doesn't actually run on until the 10 years I think you can see that straight away from like reading the blurb from reading the actual book it doesn't actually run on until the 10 years and the reason for that isn't anything sinister or anything terrible like that which again I liked it was just a really I guess again um, adults and human instinct and what people decide that they believe in and what they don't believe in and whether or not something like this is good for profit or good for sort of exposure or reputation so yeah the project doesn't end up running the full 10 years but it does conclude with a nice little happy ending for Izzy I'm not really sure that what happens to her in the end is what I expected but I think one thing I gleaned from reading this book was that I was just never disappointed by it. I don't think the book ever set out to be this sort of thing where it was going to be like, we're going to re raise super children. I mainly think it was just to look at if you could construct a perfect little world and if you couldn't, what would be the issues that would go wrong. Um, it's not really deep or anything like that, but I think it just touches the surface in a nice way. It was a nice surface level book. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. I found it easy to get through. I found it found that I kept on wanting to read it and kept on wanting to turn the pages. The final book that I'm going to speak about is this, which is a comic book or graphic novel. I don't know. This was recommended to me by a viewer when I was talking about my reading girls video. Um, and so yeah she recommended me this recommended me a whole bunch of stuff which i'm ever so grateful for but i decided to pick this up because i was in waterstones and i was in the graphic novel section i was just browsing for ages and i just obviously want to hit my goals and read things outside of what i usually read and i really enjoyed this this was so so good and i didn't know realize how many people i knew that were i guess into comic books and had read this already so then well, i posted it up on my instagram and people were like i love this i've read it it's so good um so yeah the story basically follows well this volume yeah volume one follows these two characters and their little baby hazel so alana and marco and hazel um they are from two opposing sides i guess so it's set on this it's let's roll it back this is a sci-fi fantasy comic i guess i would say and it's set on this different planet or whatever um and they are from two different opposing sides and somehow they've met it does explain in the book how they've met but you're sort of finding out how they meet through the people who are investigating them essentially there are loads of different creatures and characters in here and they are trying to hunt down these two and you're not sure why you're not sure who's on what side who comes from their planet who doesn't come from their planet and who doesn't come from either of these two planets who's also chasing them so there's i think about three different characters that are looking for them you don't know why that was a really awful description of what saga is and i'm sure someone else will be able to explain it much better than i did um but i really enjoyed this read it made me chuckle in so many places and i guess i wasn't expecting that i wasn't expecting to like laugh or anything like that 
and it was actually a very pleasant reading experience it was nice to look at the pictures and they're so beautifully drawn and the colours are wonderful. I thought I was going to get through this quite quickly because um, obviously there were less words and there were loads of pictures um, but I still found myself like pausing and stuff and not just just binging through it in one sitting because it didn't seem like you need to because it's obviously a comic book or graphic novel whatever. There are obviously loads of things that are implied and the story will skip to another scene so I guess you have to sometimes fill in the blanks for yourself which is fine um but it's just nice to just go pour over it slowly look at all the images and stuff like that and like I guess fully take the time to understand the story before flipping over so I really enjoyed it so I am going to pick up the next volumes um but these things be hella expensive but actually someone has offered to lend me them so I'm looking forward to that and I'm also reading a graphic novel at the moment which is called Monstress. I finished volume one um, and I'm on volume two so yeah we're well into these sort of sci-fi fantasy graphic novel things um, so yeah so those are the three books well the two books and then this one comic that I read this month plus I think there was one other book that I spoke about earlier yeah Happier Thinking by Lana Apologies if this video was trash. I feel like I haven't filmed in a very long time and it probably isn't the case, but yeah, I will be back with another video very soon. Not sure what that video is going to be, but I will see you in my next one. Bye.